Well, where do we go with this one tonight? Where do we go with this one tonight? Um, I mean... What's really there to say here? I mean, the Wild lose 5-4 to four in overtime to the Columbus Blue Jackets, who were coming off of a back-to-back, -back, even though it looked like the Wild were on the back-to-back -back and not Columbus, at least for the first, I'd say, 25 minutes of this game. So, yeah, I suppose let's go ahead and get into it, because holy moly did this game go from... Zero to about 150 to just absolute craziness. So, but yeah, I mean, like I say, Columbus coming off of a back-to-back, -back, you know, playing literally the night before and beating Calgary, comes into Minnesota, and, uh, well, they were skating laps around us the first 20, 25 minutes there. And by the time we got, like I say, a little bit into the second, it was a 2 nothing game, and the scoring got started by Danforth. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just one of those games where the puck just bounced over Gus, and I mean, not really much you can do there. The second goal was pretty much about the same way, just right in front of the net, a lot of traffic, and, yeah. Again, you know, like taking nothing away from Columbus. They go up 2 nothing at that point. The Wild look dead. The Wild look lethargic. And then Dakota Mermis pots one. And uh, the Wild woke up. The Wild woke up there. And then literally about a minute later, Zuccarello ties the game back up. And it's 2-2. Two to two. There's finally some momentum, some juice. And then there was a lot more back and forth, back and forth, and it literally became a track meet at that point. But the play that changed everything, the power play goal that got called back on offside, fuck the offside rule. Like... That was just, that was the deflator, really. So, basically what had happened is on a power play, Marcus Johansson apparently comes in offside, barely. And like I say, this rule has always just been so damn confusing and so frustrating because what is offside, what isn't offside, like, should it count more as like a, I, I don't know. And I know I kind of sound like a salty Wild fan, but also today watching a little bit of college football, let's just say there was a very controversial ending to a game that I was watching that was also very, well, anyway. <laughs> it was something. I'll just say that. It was definitely something. But anyway, coming back to this game. So at that point, you know, it was tied at 3 all. And then Columbus goes on the power play literally 10 seconds later. And then Boone Jenner pots one to make it 4-3. to three. So we literally go from being up 4-3 to three on a Zuccarello potential hat trick to down 4-3. All within the span of about 2-3 to three minutes. Whew, at that point, I'm thinking, great. Now what? However, though, thankfully, towards the end of the third, Pat Maroon taps it over to Marcus Johansson. And he taps it in to tie it up at four. So then we go to overtime. And it was a little bit of back and forth here and there. It was a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, just kind of a few moments there. Addison had a couple chances, Zuccarello, and I don't know. 
with Zuccarelli, you take the good and the bad, but there's a couple times there, especially in overtime, where I wish Zuccarello would shot the puck. Instead, he tried to backhand it to Kaprizov, which, again, as a Wild fan, I have screamed and yelled about that for the last, I'd say, season and a half or so, if not two seasons. Because Zuccarello showed it in the second goal of the game to tie it up on the power play. He's got a wicked wrister. He can snap the puck. The problem is, it's like he almost looks more to pass than he does to actually shoot the damn thing. And that's what's so frustrating about that. If you have an open lane, don't get cute. Fire the damn puck! <laughs> Who? And then, of course, it comes back the other way and Jack Roslovic pots the game winner. So, with all that said, though, the Wild do get a point, though, which is massive. And we're now 2-2-1 two, two and one with Edmonton coming into town. I mean, <laughs> this was, um, yeah, I mean, it was a game at the end of the day here. But it's just... This is looking a lot like last year. I will say that, though, these first, you know, basically the first month of October. And again, like I say, it's game five. The Wild do get a point and are still right about there. So I'm not too mad about that. It's just I'm seeing the same damn patterns that have doomed this team so many times. It's like looking into what? fucking mirror it it, it it really is because it's like so many times it just feels like they're especially Zuccarello I still wonder like what goes through their mind there when they're like in front of the net or something like that I don't know if maybe he doesn't feel like he has a great angle or this or that or the other thing but yeah I mean <laughs> <sighs> Hey, I mean, at the end of the day, we did get the point, and we're on to hosting Edmonton on Tuesday, but I... got to keep working on this, fellas. Got to keep working. Got to keep grinding. Got to keep improving because da. I, I think that's the best way I can describe the start of this season so far. Anyway, on to Edmonton on Tuesday here, so, uh, well, just wait and see. I mean, Edmonton's been kind of off to a slow start themselves. Like I say, I'll probably have to make a short of that because I'll be at work by the time the game ends or have to recap it on Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, credit to Columbus Credit to Adam Fantilli, who did get his first goal tonight. And, uh, yeah. On to Edmonton. So, yeah, uh, until we meet again, this is Jacob. Have a good day.